Hi, this is Deb Watson, and this morning I'm going to show you a real simple demo on doing some fog with watercolor. I usually start with the farthest away layers. In this case, I'm putting some yellow and red, making orange, onto the sky. I'm working on dry paper, but I bring a little bit of blue and paint it right beside that orange. Some of that's going to run together, that's fine. And I'm going to leave an area for some of the fog at the bottom. I don't want the fog to go around the trees. I want it to just rise up from the valleys. And I rinse the blue out of my brush and get clean water. And fill in the foggy area with the clean water making sure I touch the area above it so some of the color will bleed down in there. When you're doing multiple layers of fog, you can do it several ways. The easiest to control is to just work a little bit at a time. So I'm coming down to this bottom layer where the fog will be because it's all dry and I don't have to worry about it running together. I'm going to have my silhouettes get darker as they come forward. So you can see that I'm using much thicker paint on this most forward level. And I'm careful not to touch the drying sky far away mountain level. Because I'm working on dry paper, I'm not going to have soft edges at the top. So I'm trying to make an interesting edge, just using the tip of my brush. And I'm working very quickly, so I can get this whole area covered before it dries and get the clean water in to make the fog. You can use two brushes if you want. If you have one brush with just clean water, you don't have to keep rinsing all your paint out. This is a very small picture, so I'm just sticking with one brush. You can see I rinse out color, apply the clean water, and gently make sure it's communicating with the edges of the color. You notice that I'm not too worried about those figures in the boat because they're a silhouette. They're going to be very dark. So I can paint right on top of them with impunity. Now because too much of the paint is coming down and I don't want my fog that dark, I wipe most of the wetness out of my brush which creates a thirsty brush and I go back and use that thirsty brush to lift up some of the paint and moisture that's on my paper. This gives me very nice soft edges. And a real fog-like feeling. The water is also going to be orange. I'm starting with a really light wash of orange. It's toned down in color a bit because some of the blue was in there. I changed my composition. My original photograph went straight across and I thought it would be a lot more interesting if I broke it up into two-thirds and one-third. Now that the base coat of the water is still damp, I'm coming back with my blue and doing a few horizontal strokes and letting the colors mix together on the paper. This is going to be really light, so I'm bringing in a darker blue. And I let the whole thing dry. 
And I'm going to repeat this process using a little watery paint on the next mountain layer. And once again, I'm working on dry paper, so I'm trying to keep the edges interesting. You can use any color you want. It doesn't have to be blue and gray. You could use browns and golds, even reds, pinks, whatever your color preference is. Silhouettes are more about getting the outlines and the edges correct. And the color choice is all up to your imagination. This is going to have fog coming up from the valley back there. I'm using a smaller brush because it's a small area and I don't want to flood it. And I got half done, added the water, Now I'm going to do the other half. Students often get frustrated with watercolor because they want it to look perfect in their first coat of paint. And quite often you have to get the color down so you can work on it. So don't lose patience, just keep working. You can give things as many layers as you want. You can put the paint on, you can lift the paint off. As long as you're having fun, you'll keep painting and you will get better and better. You'll be happier and happier with your pictures. You can see that the water and the faraway mountain did dry very light. I think I'd like a little more value contrast on both of those. So I'm just going to give the water another coat. Using a little bit thicker orange. and more blue. When I'm working in water, typically I'll do horizontal strokes because that's the way the water lies. And I'm leaving one area to be very light for the light coming in from the side there. Okay, once again I let this dry and I'm doing at the intermediate layer back here in the exactly the same way. Now some of my mountain fog dried with the little bits of bloom. If you think that's too much, you can always use a brush or a toothbrush to soften up the edges. I kind of like it. I think it's exciting.
I'm pulling this down and adding my clean water fog, including that far away edge this time. So a little rubbing with the brush can help soften that. And tie the fog and the far away water together. Where the two mountains come together, I'd like that to be a really soft edge. And I'm using a thirsty brush to lift some of that up. And I'm going to give the far away mountain a little more value contrast, especially at the top. So I just put the color at the top and then add water to bring it down. And I'm using the side of the brush. You don't always have to just use the tip of your brush. You can use the side, you can use a brush in a lot of different ways. Okay, I am going to put in the little figures. I trace them from my photograph very carefully using graphite paper. And I'm using a size 6 brush, just using the tip and filling them in with very dark paint. It's a very thick combination of phthalo blue and I think some raw umber violet. I leave a tiny little line to suggest where the boat is and pull down a little bit of reflection. Water it down and bring down even more and soften some of that up. Okay, now I'm using clean water and the edge of my soft brush to soften up some of the edges I don't like. I'm also going to lift out some highlights. This is pretty calm water. It's not moving much and you have some nice little reflections. You're going to get those the best just by lifting them out. That gives you soft edges and once again I keep the horizontal pathway going. I soften up the edge where the fog is so that it kind of disappears. You can tell I spend a lot of time softening up edges. I go through a lot of these size 6 brushes because I just wear them out. But they're not that expensive. And once I get some nice light areas going there, I may come in with a few darker streaks. Not a lot darker. But 
just a little. And this is my demo on doing fog. Practice, play with it, have fun. Visit my website, www.debwatsonart.com, for more lessons. Thanks. Bye.